however, another story which is in the papers, uh, which has been garnering plenty of headlines, is this. The jihadi, uh, jihadi bride, Shemaim and Begum, uh, is likely to cost the taxpayer, you, me, up to £7 million. This is in legal bills after refusing to accept the latest defeat in her citizenship row. Begum has uh, considered um, a threat to national security, has had her plea to get her UK passport back, uh, rejected by judges. Well, let's find out a little bit more about this story and indeed whether or not she has a, a hope of getting it and indeed whether the uh, political system, or the legal system rather, is letting us down. Uh, joining me now is Paul Garlick, a KC criminal barrister. Paul, good morning. Good morning, James. So, uh, just to those uh, who uh, perhaps want a little bit more understanding on this case, perhaps you can explain um, this citizenship battle. Um, is it a political battle? Is it a nation battle? Is it a, an ideological battle? I don't think it's any of those things, actually, James. I think it's um, a decision which was made um, back in 2015 uh, when she left this country. And at that time, because she was under 21, she was entitled to uh, Bangladeshi citizenship as well as UK citizenship. And for reasons which we'll never know fully, because they're obviously intelligence matters and, and they're dealt with by MI5 and the Home Secretary, there were reasons which the Home Secretary felt justified in him rescinding her UK citizenship. And that's what this case was about in the Court of Appeal. Uh, there are a lot week. of people, though, who will look at our legal system and say, here is somebody that, whether she was brainwashed, whether she was uh, radicalised or who only knows what, um, she, because of the actions that she took, in the same way that even if you are a minor and you take actions elsewhere in society, you may very well be uh, locked up for the rest of your days as a result of uh, the decisions that you take. As a result of what she's fighting for, um, she's cost the taxpayer up to £7 million, probably going to be more, on a basis of spurious legal claims where lawyers are running rings around our system and undermining uh, British confidence or people's confidence in that system, aren't they? Well, I don't think so, because the judgment of the Court of Appeal should re restore people's faith in the courts. I thought the Lady Chief Justice put it very well right at the end of her decision, where she said it could be argued that Miss Begum is the author of her own misfortune, but it's not for this court to agree or disagree. Um, our only task is to assess whether the deprivation decision was unlawful. So the courts have applied the law uh, with no political... Um, misconception, they've applied the law properly and they've come to the conclusion that at the time the Home Secretary made his decision he was acting lawfully. It's not for the Court of Appeal to say, well, we don't agree with the decision. They just have to look at whether that decision was lawful at the time. OK, that's, and, that's interesting because I think that, that certainly gives a, a better understanding as to how that decision was reached. And I think you're absolutely right to pick out the words of Lady Justice Whipple in, in terms of her conclusions there to say uh, Miss Begum is, you know, the author of her own misfortune, but it's not for this court to agree or disagree. So, as you say, the only task of the court was to assess whether the uh, deprivation decision was unlawful. Yes. She says since it was not, Miss Begum's appeal is dismissed. So, does that mean then that the lawyers who are acting for uh, Shemaya and Begum are perhaps politicising this in order to further their case? Um, I, I don't think they're politicising. I think they're doing their, their duty to their client. They had a number of arguments. One was quite a serious argument that um, to allow her to have travelled out to, to Syria was um, a breach of the police duty and the Home Secretary's duty and that she was effectively human trafficked. Now, the court had to reach conclusions about that. And they came to the conclusion that because she was in Syria at the time, now the court does not have jurisdiction under the European Convention of Human Rights. Uh, and they can't do anything about that. But there were, the, I think there were good points taken by the lawyers. Uh, sometimes when you're challenging the decision of a politician, it is important that you are allowed to challenge the decision of a politician if either he's acted unlawfully, he had no legal power to do something, or he acted in a way which no reasonable Home Secretary could have acted in. Uh, and the courts have to review that. 
and there are arguments on both sides, as the, the, the Lady Chief Justice said. But the court came to the conclusion that first he was acting lawfully, he had the legal power to rescind her UK citizenship, and that at the time he made that decision, on the information that he had, which we'll never know, because the, there's a closed part of the judgment, obviously, which deals with all the information that came from the intelligence services. At the time he had all that information, he didn't act unreasonably. So, uh, of course, uh, Ms. Begum's legal team, they don't like uh, the answer that they've received. They could now uh, seek permission, according to this article, to challenge the ruling in the Supreme Court or indeed the European Court of Human Rights. Um, I'm assuming that this legal battle, this legal discussion, this legal um, expense continues. I would imagine so, yes, both in the Supreme Court um, and in the European Court of Human Rights. Um, and, I, and I suppose at, at any of those courts, uh, that is, uh, I suppose, a fundamental human right that one is allowed to challenge decisions. How many times uh, do you, I don't know, what, how many routes can this take? Are, are those the, then the final routes open to the legal team? Uh, if it goes to either the Supreme Court or the European, European Court for Human Rights, is that then it? It is. They have to go to the Supreme Court first and they have to ask permission of the Supreme Court. If the Supreme Court refuse permission, then they've exhausted all their remedies in the United Kingdom and then they can go to Strasbourg to the European Court. And then that is the end.